Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. So today we talk about melatonin and the reason is why am I talking about melatonin because like DHEA, melatonin is another supplement which has not yet been proved to improve pregnancy rates but which is used very widely. And there is a belief that it improves equality. So let, let's go ahead and look at the evidence. So what is melatonin? And it is an N-acetyl-5-metroxytryptamine and it is secreted by the pineal gland and it's produced in response to darkness. And so where do we use it more often? We use it for jet lags. And its plasma levels peak at about 1800 to, to at, uh, you know, 10 o'clock. The key role is in regulation of circadian rhythms and you know, while it reg regulates reproduction in many of the animal species, in primates it does not do so. So its role in reproduction is very limited in primates. So when you look at the oxygen or uh, normal reproductive process or uh, normal physiological function, you produce a lot of ROS, which is reactive oxygen species. And what do they do? They damage cells and cause oxidative stress. And again, that's one of the reasons why there's a widespread use of antioxidants. And what do they do is, is they reduce ROS. Melatonin, in fact, is an antioxidant. So that's how its role has come in, in trying to treat poor responders or trying to treat PCOS. And that's exactly why it gathered a lot of uh, interest. Now, if you look at shift workers, and shift workers tend to have more menstrual abnormalities, and again, it may be, it just may be due to how the melatonin is, is secreted. Now, let's go closer and let's look at the ovary. And melatonin is secreted by granulosa cells. It is, its antioxidant capacity in larger follicles is better than in smaller follicles, and it seems to be safe. And it has been uh, checked even through Cochrane Review that its safety is generally uh, quite good. Now, an idea of what tends to happen is, and if you look at those who uh, studies which look at reacting oxygen species and look at uh, oxidative stress, stimulation does cause a certain amount of oxidative stress. And there was a retrospective study of 138 cases which looked at follicular fluid uh, in successful pregnancy, and these had slightly higher antioxidants and a lower level of re reactive oxygen species. Now, to a large extent, I just don't know how. You know what is its impact, and are these, uh, to a large extent, byproducts of metabolism and byproducts which which tell us how much damage is occurring, and that's something I don't think we know well about it. We also know that reactive oxygen species seem to have an implication in male infertility. So how does melatonin? How may melatonin act on oocytes? And again where does the energy of a cell comes from the mitochondria and they tend to produce their own antioxidants melatonin may improve their efficacy and in fact some animal studies have shown that if you give very high doses of melatonin in fact you can worsen outcome the problem is that of multiple studies done people have used their, their own patients as control so what you're creating is you're creating a, 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 an end result which has a huge bias and and that to a large extent leads to a situation we don't have any answers so let's look at the two major studies which came out in melatonin and the first was a, a prospective trial of 65 women so they had minocetol and folate versus minocetol folate and melatonin and there was a trend towards a high pregnancy rate when you added melatonin to that combination though it was not statistically significant so another study which was a which was a very large randomized controlled trial and these were women with PCOS who were going in for ICSI 165 patients so they gave myositol 4 gram folate 400 microgram and melatonin 3 milligram versus 166 patients of myositol folic acid versus in a third arm only folic acid 
And what they real saw in that study is in the triple arm they saw that there were a higher number of mature oocytes and grade 1 embryos. So what did they say? They said that probably in these studies you, what does melatonin do? It may increase the synergistic activity of an antioxidant and may help it. Then they came to systematic reviews. In the first systematic review, they pooled in five RCTs and the favor went in favor of metformin at an odds ratio of a risk ratio of 1.21. But this again did not include the largest RCT performed, and that was one of the deficiencies. Again, there was a lack of live birth rates. Cochrane also did a review and said that none of them had a significant improvement in live birth rates. The odds ratio was probably 1.30. There were no adverse effects. So again, what tends to happen? At present, the evidence is limited and we, it, we lack the evidence to suggest that we should use metformin in all these cases. And we just don't know the answer and probably I think like many supplements it is it follows a curve where we see that it's working and we see a few cases that its results are better and then you eventually come across a situation in which the results do stabilize and most studies come up and you know the, the curve goes down and eventually we realize it's useless so we don't know where melatonin is going to be but what you need is you need more randomized controlled trials. You just need more trials of people using it. And unless we have them, we just wouldn't know. So again, it's a supplement which is making a huge rounds and a lot of people are using it and we don't know whether it really works. Thank you very much.